I thought it would be easy to find a map of the Mississippi River watershed. Not easy to find. I first started looking at maps and they were all from like the 1980s and they were very vague. <laughs> then online I found this vector map of the, of the watershed of the United States. The group from Uspatial then were able to kind of smooth out this basic file and then convert it into a program for a CNC router to cut it out of MDF board. And that's our pattern. Then we'll make a concrete mold of each of these two by two foot sections and so they all assemble like a jigsaw puzzle. And then once that cures, which will take about four days, then we'll bring that to the Weissman, set it up again as a whole map. Um, a lot of my work is kind of quietly political, often to do with um, issues about global warming. I was working on a project where specifically I wanted to cast a human heart in iron because of the connection between the material and the circulatory system. If, if iron didn't have the quality of rusting, we couldn't exist because it's that oxygen-fixing nature of iron and the iron in our blood that allows us it to travel throughout our circulatory system, that enables us to oxygenate our, our system. What happened with River of Iron is I've always been interested in the performative qualities of iron and also interested in how it moves very similar to, to a river. It flows like water when it's molten. But then also thinking about wanting to call more attention to the kind of the threats facing our, our rivers, our watersheds. Uh, thinking about iron being, you know, an important part and part of our circulatory system and then thinking about our rivers being an important part and part of the circulatory system of our landscape. A lot of people in Minnesota and Wisconsin are aware of this issue of frac sand mining that's going on in the southernmost part of our states. We actually have the biggest and best deposit of this sand in the world. This material is injected into the geological strata. The fuel comes out, then that fuel is transported to refineries. Again, a lot of these lines run right along the Mississippi River. It's really only a question of time before there's some major accident and we have an entire train of fuel in the Mississippi. So I'm using this idea of fire and um, danger of showing this you know, molten river, you know, it's not what you want to see a river looking like. I've always been interested in the performative qualities of iron. It's, it's visually dynamic, it's beautiful, it's, um, you know, it's fiery, it's dramatic. And sometimes I wonder as an artist, where is that line between wanting to call people's attention to some issue and actually doing something about it? How do you actually make change? You never know. Maybe somebody will see it and think about it and it might change their mind and they might do something differently. So just kind of creating these like little moments that are kind of outside of our usual experience and maybe just that will help people to kind of see things in a different way. You know, I, I don't think you can ask for more than that as an artist, is, is maybe just have this moment of kind of a metaphysical connection with, with somebody. My husband passed away on April 13th, and um, there was a moment when I wasn't sure I was going to go ahead with this because it was just too, too difficult. But mm -hmm. I had enough support from the community that I felt like I could, and this will be poured then on June 13th, which is exactly two months after he passed away. So I really see this event as being dedicated to him.